Hi, my name is Susu. Easy to pronounce, right? I would agree. So would my elementary school teachers. However, when I began high school, I started to notice some extra pauses and squinting when my name came up next in the attendance list. Followed up with Susu? And the inevitable question following, is that how you pronounce it? At first, I thought it was a joke, because how else would you pronounce it? <laughs> but I tried giving them the benefit of the doubt, and maybe reading a name on paper might be harder to sound out than me verbally saying it out loud, right? Here's usually how an interaction would play out when I would go to the doctor's office to make an appointment or to a fast food restaurant and give them my name. Hi, my name is Susu. Susan? No, Susu, S-U-S-U. Okay, Susie, sounds good. <laughs> are, are either of those my name? Uh, well, because of these interactions, I've gotten into the annoying habit of spelling my name out after I pronounce it, and somehow I thought that this would remedy the situation. Yet, yeah, I've still found myself stuck with the same outcome. I'm not sure whether people think it's hard to pronounce or they think it's more exotic than it really is, or people are doing it on purpose because they've never heard of a name like that before, so it can't possibly exist in their mind. My main question, though, is why would they completely discard what I've just told them and try to create a whole new name for me? I still don't understand it to this day. So now that you know how to pronounce it, let's get on to the meaty part, the origins of the name. <laughs> It's always difficult starting a conversation with someone new because the first two questions you usually get are, what's your name and where are you from? Which makes sense, I don't blame them for that. What I do start to become irritated about is when they ask me, what does Susu mean or how did you get that name? I don't think they'd be asking this to someone named Sally or Bobby or Veronica. <laughs> To some people, when they're answering this, they'll tell you a fun story about how they got it from their great-grandmother who lived a lavish life abroad, or their uncle who could down 50 hot dogs in 10 minutes. <laughs> Whatever the story is, it's not something I can relate to. I try to change the topic, but I always get stuck in feeling like I have to tell them what it means. There's no easy way to exit the conversation after you've just introduced yourself. Plus, it's not even like it's a real Chinese name. My Chinese adopted name is Huang Su, and my adoptive parents took the Su part and doubled it because they thought it sounded like Sissy, the nickname I gave my sister when I was three. So is it even Chinese at that point? <laughs> I've, I've concluded that it's a true Asian American name, taking the name I was given in China and morphing it into a name that we're not really sure if it's even politically correct. When I start to explain my name to these strangers, it feels like I'm giving a history class on the origins of the Chinese language, when in reality, I feel as if I'm just making this stuff up so that listeners can feel satisfied that I've taught them something about my culture, which is a whole different microaggression I could talk about for another time, but I digress. <laughs> I tell them that in the Chinese language, they often double syllable syllables for many words, so they doubled my name, Susu. When I actually looked up the reason for why the Chinese language might be monosyllabic, monosyllabic, <laughs> I'm not given a very clear answer. Many people dispute that we'll never truly know it's all because it's all based on history, but that mimics my point is that I'll never truly know about the language or my name or about my biological parents. It's all up in the air. And that's just a reminder to me every time anyone asks what my name is and where I'm from because I truly don't know it myself. From, from my experience, there seems to be a disconnect in our educational system. I learn about all of these British colonists and how our government was formed, but not about how Chinese people immigrated to America and fought for their rights here or anything about the experience of adopted children in America. Maybe if there was some more schooling about the Chinese American experience, my name wouldn't seem so out of the ordinary for them. It's ironic, me telling you a story about how I dislike my name because I always have to explain it as I continue to explain my name. <laughs> but the conclusion is, I'm still a little unsure how I feel about this name. I don't know if I'll truly ever accept and admire it in this lifetime, 
but I'm hoping there will be a future with an abundance of susus and it will be a more common name that is accepted when they introduce themselves so that they don't feel so out of place. Much of life is kind of just figuring out who you are and what you want to do. So by corresponding life's journey and my feelings about my name, I know eventually I'll find my way. What I do know for now is though, is that it's a unique name and no one else has it. My full Asian American name, Susu Schwaber.